I want to know how has that helped you, like in your life, spiritually or just mentally? How has yoga helped you? So uh, yoga literally flipped the script. Wow. I'm I'm absolutely saying this because not because I'm sitting here and you mm-hmm. know chatting with you because. I feel what you've given them is that, like, okay, we can also do it. You know, it's not just the people in the big cities, but like in Coog, as you say, there's so much talent there. When I go out there, I see boys just playing football and fl- playing very good quality like sports. So I'm sure. I always wanted to, you know, play sport. School was the last thing I wanted to do. Uh, you that know, makes so, the two of us. And in my wildest dreams, first of all, meeting him was amazing. And I did not even think that he will be watching, you know, my match. I love reading because it transports me into a world of more. But at ease. Hi, I'm Shubhra Ayappa. This is Flip the Script, and I feel like we're getting to know each other. Wouldn't you agree? There's another thing you have to know about me. I love having a routine, plan of action on days I'm doing nothing all, at all. Like for example, I'm that girl who allocates time for everything that I'm doing. Even if it's just going to the mall, I have to make sure there's like a schedule. I think this stems from my roots. My parents taught us that it's very important to have like an active life and also strike a very good balance with it. And somehow I've taken this into my adult life, and this trait has really, really helped me. For example, when I'm traveling, I make sure that I have like a 45 minutes of yoga, irrespective of how busy my schedule is and whatever. It doesn't matter because I know the kind of peace and center that I achieve through it, and I truly believe that discipline is a pathway to. Achieving anything in life. Someone who has mastered that is my next guest, and I'm so excited to have him here. He plays, and he plays damn well. He follows his passion, and he's so damn good at it. Yes, he's hit rock bottom at times, but he's only bounced back. And how? And right now, he's in the top of his game. He's a Bangalore boy, a fellow Coog. Loves his coffee and loves dancing to Bollywood music. Trust me, I've seen him shake a leg, and he's so good at it. I'm so excited to have my friend Rohan Bopana over here. Hi, Rohan. Hi, Shubhra. So happy to uh, you know be here chatting with you. Thank and you. And first of all, congratulations on uh, starting this uh, podcast, flip the script with uh, Shubhra. So I think it's amazing that you're doing this. Uh, you know, it takes a lot of courage, I think, to you know be. The host, yes, and you know, start something like this. So really, all the best for you know this journey, and I'm really happy to be How here. How sweet! Thank yeah. you. I love this kind of validation. I need it. As I said, you're my third guest. I'm a little anxious. I've sat on the other side, and people have asked me, and I can faff. But like to be this side and really like drive the show, it can get a little thing. But thank you so no, much. No, no, yeah, I think you deserve it, and uh, you know for. Everything what you have had in your career, and this is always a le- new learning, new journey. So all the very How best. How sweet! You're going to make me emotional at the beginning of my <laughs> show itself. Thank you, thank you emotional so much. Job, I'm yeah. so excited to listen to all the experiences that you've had, right, with life and sport and stuff. And honestly, when I was making my list of people and was thinking of the people who've actually flipped the script, you are my. First or second name, Rohan. I'm not saying that because I have to, but you really were. So I'm just happy you're here, and we're gonna have like a fun chat. Absolutely. I feel like I know you, but today I think I'm gonna get to know you more by the end of this show. Oh yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to it in some way. Uh, that uh, you know, I think it's uh, always fun that uh, to the interaction at a you know, especially when you're doing a podcast. I right. Think it's, yeah. So definitely, I think on a more personal level, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Before we get into anything. Everyone's talked about it. Everyone knows it. But I want to know how does Rohan feel being the talk of the town, just not here across the globes. How does it feel? It feels amazing. Uh, uh, you know, I, actually, it's. Uh, I really feel proud that I'm able to inspire so many people. Uh, even uh, this time of uh, my career, this juncture of my career, uh, to be. Uh, not only known for be playing tennis, but also uh, uh, you know inspiring a lot of people above uh, you know forty years old who have come out who have nothing to do with uh, tennis related, but also have come to me and said they really 
are so happy that uh, you know I've been able to play at the highest level and it's inspired them in some way to actually do something more apart from their regular day to day uh, you know 9 to 5 job rather yeah you're it's an inspiration uh, i was actually in kook and i remember crossing a club you know one of the smaller clubs there and they were playing your uh, match okay and there was so much energy and i could see every person being so excited and there was this sense of pride so you really have inspired influence so many people everywhere yeah, so no no thank you and kook is uh you know obviously a place where i grew up and uh, you know the kindness started from there the lot of love uh, you know i think uh, from my parents friends of course family has been a big support but uh, also their friends and everyone they always encourage anybody playing sport True. i mean no matter what True. the sport was i think they encourage youngsters right. and i think that kind of love support really uh, you know helps you uh achieve your dreams and then once you're there also they they are really happy, happy. you know for yeah. for you which is amazing and also i think right now i feel like there's so much talent in this grassroots level right like locally and i feel what you've given them is that like okay we can also do it you know it's not just the people in the big cities but like in kook as you say there's so much talent there when i go out there i see boys just playing football and fl- playing very good quality like sport so i'm sure you've given them that like thing of hey a kook boy has done it maybe we can do it too and i love being that inspiration if, if i can give that to someone i get excited and you've done that for thousands there no but i think it is that inspiration when you see somebody from your own country especially from your own city, city. that gives you that much more inspiration so i mean you know no matter which sport it is for yeah. me any time it says the name and says india yeah. i'm automatically interested in it right right so i think you know no, no matter where in the world you are i think it's extremely important for that sport to be shown in the mm. country that's how it inspires the next generation and i think that doesn't i'm not saying only to sport in any every th- field i think when people watch and people hear about uh, you know someone doing really well or playing out there is when they like you mentioned they even can dream that oh yes i can even get there get and there. Uh, right. you know i think uh, uh, we need to create opportunities yeah. and these opportunities is what really makes you know, it makes, happen yeah makes it happen absolutely yeah i started my introduction by saying i love yoga right and how it's helped me and you know that i've been practicing yoga for like the last 11 years that's right i know that you do iyengar yoga and i know that it's helped you with your general health and uh, um a lot of your healing has happened through yoga but i want to know for me personally yoga is something that i do more than the physical benefits it's for my internal like my peace my calm i want to know how has that helped you like in your life spiritually or just mentally how has yoga helped you so uh, yoga literally flipped the script wow i I'm, i'm absolutely saying this because not because i'm sitting here and you mm-hmm. know chatting with you because as you know yoga has always been in india for you know it started here right i only picked it up at the age of 40 during the pandemic right so i have completely no cartilages on my knees it's right. fully worn out mm. it's uh, you know of course wear and tear over the years uh so my cousin's sister she actually teaches yoga okay and so i asked her, i said uh, you know i have time now there's no tournaments happening we are we are nobody so i said can i start yoga she said but for your condition you need to do ayangar yoga okay hmm. she said the ashtanga yoga i teach is not really something which is going to work out for you but so i said okay great so then i look up online hmm. where the ayangar yoga is thankfully next to my place i found uh, uh this couple mohan and jaya who started this practice room who had uh, ayangar yoga so i reached out to them and i told them uh, i introduced myself i told them uh, you know i'm here for some time this is my condition so they actually called me over they literally <laughs> studied my entire uh, yeah you know uh, my legs mainly because i lost so much of muscle and they actually took up uh, on themselves to really make this challenge and see if it makes a difference because everybody said i have to replace you know the knees i tried uh, hyaluronic injections prp injections which nothing really worked okay 
so i said uh, you know i have no where to go <laughs> that's the first time uh, you know normally somebody who travels 30 weeks a year and during the pandemic you know i was i was here so four times uh, in a week i had 90 minute sessions of uh, ayengar uh, yoga and i kept doing it and what has really uh, in my career really helped is constantly trying to persevere something and finding ways and i think that is my strength uh, you know so i said okay let's give it a try i don't know if i at the age of 20 25 somebody told me to try ayengar yoga i had no patience maybe then but now you know my condition was such i said okay let me give it a shot and then two two and a half months later i i saw once the strength started coming back i had no kind of pain on my knees um you know back in this was in 2020 i started yoga 2019 i was on two three painkillers a day wow you know okay. and also obviously thinking should i continue playing because it's extremely painful and then by by the time august uh, september when i started playing again um i felt i had no kind of pain on the knees that automatically started making a difference mentally as well because any time you know you're feeling pain free everything else starts to you know uh, get better you start thinking better uh, suddenly my tennis game is feeling better because i'm even maybe a step faster now again even though uh, you know that strength has you know was not there and then now it's come back so that has made the difference so then i said okay let's start working on this let's see how uh, i would love to have traveled with yoga teacher mm. but you know it is expensive when you already have a physio coach traveling with you uh, you know family traveling with you plus a yoga teacher it becomes you know too much especially uh, when you're doing it all by yourself and uh, so then i started asking him you know what i can do on the road when i was traveling uh, uh, you know and uh, so he said okay let's try some online classes and for some reason that never worked for me i am not a online person i need somebody you know to be there uh, yeah so i mean uh, so that i think really made a huge difference and a start of a new mindset towards this game and towards the way i've been playing wow yeah. i love that so i love how you said it flipped the script i think that gave you like the confidence to play better right like you weren't in pain i'll tell you my story so i come from a home where we don't take tablets we just don't like taking tablets and at the age of 18 or something um i i was on my period for like about two and a half months continuously and i went to the doctor the doctor said that she has to get operated like at 18 19 you know your parents are like you don't want to undergo an operation and they were like obviously distraught then somebody told me to go to this yoga guru and said just show your scan okay so i showed him my scan and the doctor a day before said there is no other resort other than undergoing surgery my guru ji said uh, take two months practice with me uske baad you do a scan and if you have to go go back to it i was like what is there to lose anyway let's just try it out i did my yoga every single day you won't believe it i went back saw the scan i did a scan i was completely fine nothing no wow. cyst no uterus problem nothing of that sort and by god's grace because i've been continuing there's nothing that's come back really so yoga changed my life and i speak about it so much and i feel like since it's helped me i want to impart the knowledge i keep telling my friends i'm not a certified yoga teacher but i keep saying you've got a free teacher please apply that and it'll just change your life completely like for you with the knee for me it started with my stomach and then just as i said the stability and the calm and everything that comes along with it so no, absolutely i think it's uh, it's really incredible but i also have told a lot of people it is purely individual mm. because you don't know whether it might work i don't know if it works i said for me it has worked right you know i i can definitely vouch you know for the fact that that has made a big difference yeah. maybe it will work you know for you but i mean there's no harm giving it a try right exactly uh, you yeah. know so but i think uh, you know the older you get this is maturity you, you, also yes, that seeps uh, in absolutely. right yeah absolutely and uh, you know it's been incredible i mean uh, there was a couple of weeks where my yoga teacher did uh, end up traveling and uh, because i wanted to do a different thing in terms of whenever i came back to bangalore i did yoga with mm. with him so i said okay we do that what i wanted to change is right before my match or right after my match i wanted him to teach me few things what i could do 
Mm. And tennis being so last minute in terms of scheduling, I don't know till the night before whether I'm playing at 11 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 5 o'clock. Oh, so, tennis really? schedule is like that. Okay, okay. Because we literally live day to day. There's no second chance. Mm. So, if we lose, you're out of the tournament. But if we win, we, we need to see who the our opponent is and when that time slot fits for the next day of the matches. Wow, okay. So, it's very last minute. Okay. So, I said, that is where I really want to challenge myself because maybe I'm waking up at 7 in the morning for 11 o'clock match or if it's a 3 p.m., 8 p.m. match, we are waking up differently, when I need to do yoga, when I need to start it. So that is something also I wanted him to travel to really see. So he came to Hamburg, I ended up making the finals, which was great that week because he got to see, four. I played five matches or four matches. Four, all the four matches were different timings. Okay. So okay. you know, so yeah, he, yeah. so then he, you know, understood. Yeah, okay, well, you know, yeah. uh, you know, it's very difficult when uh, you explain to somebody, and then, uh, you know, when you when they first hand see it, that's when they realize what all goes through it. And uh, in a way, when I travel, I have more downtime compared to when I'm here in Bangalore. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, when I go there, I know this is my routine. I go practice, play a match, and then I have actually time to for myself or if it's evening match to explore in the morning in Bangalore invariably there's something uh, or the other going and uh, uh, you know uh, I, I feel that is the place I can really think through sit through myself find you know new ways to challenge myself about yoga I'm that person That's I can, like, I can imagine I mean you know podcast on <laughs> yoga since you brought up your age, I had decided like when you entered, you said everyone knows my age and I didn't want to speak about it. But I mean, I believe age is just a number. Honestly, age is just a number. But how is that Rohan is playing this quality and top level of tennis at the age of 43? What are you doing differently than the rest of them, you feel? So one thing, I mean, like you said, I did bring up the, you know, about my age. But now I say I, I'm at level 43, nice. not at age 43. Mm. You know, and everything because there is nobody there at uh, currently at uh, my age who's playing. So nobody's conquered this level apart from me. Mm. So I said level, you know, 44 is coming up, <laughs> uh, you know. But uh, uh, what has changed is the mental strength mm. to able to play pain free. And to really, I feel uh, the yoga helped my mind calm also in a way. Indirectly, it has helped. Not that I was saying going to yoga to say I need to, you know, work on my uh, mind and this. So I don't feel rushed on the tennis court. I feel no matter what the situation is, what the scenario is, my experience is actually coming into play than, you know, feeling a little bit nervous there, going there and, you know. So that has made a tremendous difference. I don't feel any that, you know, any pressure to play there. I just enjoying my time competing and really traveling uh you know uh, we have a uh, beautiful daughter she's four four years old now and then she's getting to watch me play live tennis so you know they, uh, for the family traveling also makes a huge difference right. at the end of the day i mean you know and then uh, you know just been able to because i don't know um, or i didn't know whether i would continue playing or uh, you know for this long <laughs> So when, uh, you know, we had our uh, uh, daughter, I was not sure that she'll be able to even watch me play live. So, you know, so which is great in a way. So the few tournaments they do, uh, you know, come to, it's a, it's really nice that uh, because tennis is kind of a very, very lonely tour. You just go by yourself. Um, yes, if you have a coach and a physio, which you can afford yourself to, uh, for them to be there. Yes, there is some company, but otherwise you're just there by yourself. Living out of a suitcase, uh, every meal is in a restaurant, 30 weeks you're in a hotel room, you know, so, it, it, and every week you're in a new city, you know, because tennis is like, starts literally first week of January and ends on November 20th. Crazy. Yeah, I mean, you can literally, I'm saying is that you can literally play every week from January 1st till, till the mid of November if you want to. Wow. We need to choose and pick and choose, right. but there's no rule which says that you can't play. Can't play, right. 
So and you've been doing this for a while, no? Yeah, I've been doing it for 21 years. Wow. Uh, you know, so it it has been uh, extremely difficult at uh, tw- literally 2021. I mean, I said I started the yoga 2020, uh, but at 2021, the year uh, first five months, I didn't win a match. So I mean, there I I still remember. I mean, I was sitting in Portugal, uh, you know, overlooking the ocean, and I'm telling myself maybe. you know it's time to call it a day you know when you're not winning a match at all especially when you have done it for so long and day in day out you're practicing doing the right things but when you go to the match it's not happening it's not happening it's not happening you know so then you're obviously doubting yourself you know and uh, you know from having that kind of year in 2021 and then to have a year which is the best it has been in my entire career 2023 the I think it's it's just amazing and really proud uh, you know feeling to have done this and uh, not only you know a uh, lot of people like I uh, said who have uh, come around and really been inspired even also the peers mm. you know I think it's been something amazing they really appreciate it because uh, it's not being just a journeyman on that you're still winning tournaments still doing that uh, you know yeah. uh, getting back to my highest ranking ever which is 3 in the world uh you know it was a decade ago when i last got to 3 in the world so you know and somebody at you know the age of 33 uh, told me that the next time you'll get to number 3 is only 10 years later you know i don't think i would have believed them i said yeah, yeah. sense of humor yeah absolutely yeah. yeah you know so yeah it's been you know uh, that kind of uh, uh year very kind uh, to have had this you know kind of year and uh, most importantly happy to be representing india in these big events even though i've been just that one person doing it but you know really happy that i really feel that there is someone doing it doing it yeah, yeah. it's interesting what you said because that's exactly what i believe in right you made that mindset change where you're like okay i'm putting so much pressure on myself of like winning but you made that thing saying let me enjoy this process and i think when you made that shift is when things got easier and f- i do that before i used to put like the result has to be excellent and if i don't do that it's affecting me and because i was working backwards so much pressure you put on yourself and maybe you won't perform as good now i'm like i don't know what that's going to be that's not in my yeah. control i'm just going to give it my best make the process fun and i believe that when you you're sincere about it something great will come out of it and i think that's a little shift you did to yourself too right 200% yeah. and I, and i feel you need to change your own story nobody is going to change it for you 100% yeah. you know i think that is where the shift happens when you realize that everybody around you can support you can guide you but it is yourself it has to come from within <laughs> is when you need to make that change and i feel that is what really changed nice i know your father's a coffee planter and uh, did you at any point think you were going to be a planter or did you know from the beginning itself it's sport for me well i think uh, when i was growing up at age 10 11 you don't think you're going to be a pl- coffee planter because at a young age you're not even thinking of business or <laughs> yeah, trying to, uh, true. you know so but sport yes ha huh. I always w- loved playing sport. I always wanted to, you know, play sport. School was the last thing I wanted to do. Uh, you That know, makes so, the two of us. In the okay, room. so yeah. there you go. <laughs> I think maybe I don't know. It's uh, in Coog. Sport is comes first naturally. Yeah. I think more than uh, you know going to academics, yeah, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. So, uh, so yeah. So uh, you know, uh, even though. I was traveling to a lot of tournaments, a lot of academies. I went to. They said I was not good enough. Okay. They, you know, so you know there was a, a, it. Was it was tough because you know when you're going in expectation, thinking, oh, maybe I'm going to join this academy, and suddenly they're like, no, you're not good enough. You you can't be selected. So my breakthrough happened only at the age of 21. So, okay. but I'm thankful to my parents that they let me in that journey. Still, they were not in a hurry to. see results i mean you know today i have a tennis academy and i speak to a lot of the parents of course they want quick results everybody even if they maybe want to be as saying okay let's try and be ron bopana if not no jokovic or federer but something to do quick so i give them a few very simple examples in the sense uh, i said does someone go to school and 3 months later move a class 
Mm. They take the whole year to move to the next class, or you know. So I say it's a process. It's a journey. It's which is similar to a sport. Mm. It does take time, you know. And a uh, lot of the po- parents, when they drop their kids and they come to the tennis court and they're at the fence outside and holding the fence and they're telling the kid how to play tennis or what. So I call them the fence coaches. Is what who I call them. So then I tell them. I said. Uh, Uh, you know you're distracting the kid i said if you have enrolled your kid at an any academy you got to trust the coaches if you have enrolled him and you are trying to tell the kid something so they're like yeah but he's not moving this i said so tell me the last time you went to a class when the teacher was teaching and you told the teacher what to do not one parent <laughs> says you know he's been there so i said but why not they say they have no answer or they don't yeah. they say but because we you know we are doing something else i said yeah here you have the privilege to watch yeah. and you give that opportunity yeah. so you know uh, what i did is now uh, i've told at the academy that the parents can come once a week not every single day right. so you know see we need to i said the kid needs to think for himself the kid needs to learn we, before when he's about to hit a ball if he's more worried what the parent is going to stay you know and i i think i also was initially extremely scared to have my parents come and watch my matches that pressure right that pressure yeah. in okay. case you lose you, you maybe they, you know they'll say something you know whatever it is or you know so initially i didn't want them to come matches i watch matches uh, you know rather and uh, you know now obviously i want them to come everywhere to watch <laughs> matches because it's so different yeah, yeah. but i think uh, it's a good ap- approach actually do you go to school and tell the teachers what to do Treat exactly. this the same way, Absolutely. right? It's a learning process. Yeah, that's crazy. Wow, I like that fence. Uh, <laughs> fence coaches. coaches. Yeah, that's a nice term. Yeah. Was there a specific moment in your life where you're like, tennis is it for me? Like, did do you remember something happening where you're like, I found my purpose and this is what it is? So the uh, in the year 1994, I moved to Pune. I was at age of 14 when I moved from Kur to Pune. my dad took me there and uh, i uh, he enrolled me in a uh, tennis academy and first day we got to pune and he said okay uh, we we go shopping hmm. so i said okay this is, <laughs> this is really great he takes me to a bicycle shop okay and he said this is your mode of transport huh. uh, this is what it's going to be huh. so and i was staying in a hostel so it was 15 kilometers a day just to go to the fitness come back go to the tennis come back go in the evening tennis come back wow and back then you didn't have uh, mobile phones or in the hostel we had uh, no tv there was just a warden there who could not understand uh, i mean he for the first year maybe once a month he gave me non vegetarian and coming from kur <laughs> at 14 i was like this cannot, i cannot that was my only complaint to my parents that i am not getting non vegetarian food which you know something which i grew up in you know kur having yeah. so then the warden there one day he told me he said you are complaining about so i'm going to give you every day and i hope you're going to like it and he, i and i had the biggest smile on my face and he thought that he was really going to you know the, uh, you know tell me the okay maybe i'll get put off by it but then i think over the years third year finally realized okay this guy you know does need <laughs> yeah yeah he needs it and uh, yeah so that was uh, you know uh, what kind of changed in terms of to understand how tennis is really played coming from cook because there were so many other players in cook i was just doing it by myself and suddenly i had all this freedom and that is where i think you know i was like oh i get to travel to the series i get to see places and i get to play tennis so i said you know i need to just start enjoying it and then only at the age of 21 i had a big breakthrough winning a national tournament in chennai and then i got into the davis cup team uh and that is where it everything changed and you know really the belief started that oh i can also do well i've beaten players that are never beaten for 4 5 years and suddenly have beaten them so maybe because i got stronger everything uh, you know doing all that training and suddenly everything clicked in in one week one tournament right. and that gave that confidence uh, you know to nice. say okay this is what i really yeah. need to be yes it came very late but i still feel you know that is something uh, where it the switch that. happened yeah 
Yeah, it's rough for uh, anyone to keep meat away from a cook. Yeah, that's the same thing for me. <laughs> I can leave anything, but please, yes, you know, I, think, I, I just I think we're inbuilt, you know, from yeah, a young age, you know. Yeah. Yes, yes. You know, eating uh, yeah. a lot of meat. Yeah. A lot of meat. Uh, talking about tennis, I'm. Sh- is there a chapter of your life which was like the most toughest, trying and testing? And how did you stay afloat, and how did you come out of it? If you look back at your tennis career or personal life, whatever. Yeah, so the toughest moment was 2006, where I was just kind of getting in the groove, winning a few tournaments, being recognized because I was in the Davis Cup team and in the country for tennis. And then it was a major setback because I had a shoulder surgery. Okay. So which put me off for six months. You know, I was here in uh, you know Bangalore, uh, just sitting in my apartment and. not knowing the fact that whether you even play this sport again right so that was the hardest part and the the during that period i think what got me through is family and friends who are not enrolled so much in tennis okay mm. so because they, then they were there we were having uh, you know a lot of fun enjoying ourselves so that was kind of the uh, time where it helped your mind you know focus and you know be different because every time i sat down to myself that thought came oh am i going to be playing because you see your peers playing they're playing the tournaments they're traveling and doing this so i mean i uh you know i traveled i think 45 50 minutes uh, almost one and a half months to a, a hospital just to do my physio work wow you know but religiously i did it I think that is the you know inst thing which was always I have uh, you know had so religiously I went you know uh, constantly doing the physio work the ultrasound whatever it was and then finally went to a physio started working on uh, getting better and then eventually you know picking up a racket again to even hit even I still remember that first time getting back on the tennis court felt amazing mm-hmm. because you know you didn't even think that. so that time was extremely extremely difficult uh, you know because um, also uh, you know you're just starting to maybe make some money or you know earn for yourself you know be independent and suddenly you have this major setback uh, you know and i remember the, the uh, my pain started when i was in brazil i just reached brazil for a tournament for a four week uh, uh, trip and the first week I just couldn't even lift my racket. I was in tears with that much kind of pain. So they said, you know, it's a you know a tear, uh, some uh, uh, bursa inflammation, and uh, bursitis was there, which had to be sh- you know shaved off. Uh, so then I came all the way, did the surgery in Bombay, and then uh, came to Bangalore, and I was just here. So that I think was, you know, of course there have been a few Obviously. other injuries which has been set back, but that has been the longest one which has right. been I a think major. It's that- it's at that time of your life right and that uncertainty will i get better when am i going to be- get better that's the thing at least if you knew that hey okay it's going to take so much time i'm going to get back then it's okay but to stay in that state of limbo for me also is very scary like yeah absolutely yeah. and unlike a team sport yeah. where you know you are con- you know the team is still doing well it is very different here it is only you yeah your, your the, team <laughs> yeah so you need to come back and start again from the literally from the scratch to uh, get up your rank uh, get your ranking back up and play these tournaments and you know start coming back and that takes you know that much of a time it's not like uh, you know someone else is you know there making and you come in back into the team being fit right. and then you straight away play the you know um, t- tournaments which you were playing right. it does take that much uh, you know process and time of course and yeah. then at that point of time i didn't really have a uh uh chance to travel with a coach or a physio yeah, yeah. so you need to do everything and uh, you know do the uh, recovery part and you know taking care of that injury every single day yeah. and uh, at the end of the day sometimes you know you get lazy that when it gets better you think oh you don't need to do it which is actually you need to do uh, yeah. yeah yeah i have my tools usually when i'm having like um a bad time i either watch a podcast or listen to my music i have like music for every phase of my day i have a playlist uh, like before i come to shoot i have these two songs i listen to in the car and yeah. feel good 
I know how much you love music. Like yeah. uh, I've seen you dance, and you have some good moves, man. People should know just, that about yeah, Rohan. I just stay away from uh, you know. I just go and do whatever I feel like whatever my mind <laughs> says. Go move left, right, everything. Yeah. <laughs> and that's that should be the way of everyone. They shouldn't think if I'm a good dancer or not. You should just have a good time. Absolutely. I yeah. want to know. Do you have like a song or a playlist that you choose before you step into court, or you know, just to like unwind? uh actually i don't but the night before it's been for years uh, you know uh when i'm sleeping it's that pella nasha song i always always play it and today you know the, thankfully you can say uh, you know uh, sleep timer after end of the track <laughs> you know you know go switch it off but there has been times where that song has been playing suddenly in middle of the night and then switch off the music but that is the one song is always on repeat and when just before i sleep it just gives me that calmness and how cute pehla nasha pehla nasha for years now for years for years How did it start? Some romantic story. Uh, no, no, it no. was just you know I just like I love listening to you know Bollywood songs and uh, you know the, I was watching. I think when I went to Pune is when that Bollywood love even started. You know, <laughs> watching uh, first of all, getting to know the language in uh, he, start learning Hindi a little more because in Kug, <laughs> you know, hardly anyone taught you or uh, you know. Then I picked up Marathi as well. Then I started watching you know movies there, and I think Bollywood love came from there. Okay. And then you know, uh, you know. So I was always watching every movie, the songs you constantly listen to, and uh, yeah. So. Pehla yeah, Nasha. Yeah. It's your lullaby, basically. Yeah, it is. It is literally. Do you listen to it with your daughter now? She knows. Yeah, yeah. Literally yesterday in the car, you know, what song we're going to pick, and she picked that song. I was like, and first time ever. Otherwise, it's always uh, you know, Coco Melon songs <laughs> or you know, you know, something to do with uh, you know, obviously some nursery rhymes. I think the first time. I don't know what it was. She's a Panasha. <laughs> no, I mean she because now she goes on the phone and she she sees the icon and she knows which song it is. So she <laughs> just so yeah sweet. so you know so it's I I don't know what uh, prompted her to do that but yeah. How oh, cute! Yeah. I love this story. I've never heard anyone say pair. I love the song. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Chatty, you are. I love it. So nice. What is a piece of advice you wish you had when you were maybe eighteen, nineteen? To set up a base in Europe, than in India. Mm. You know the logistics to travel to from India. uh is that much harder in terms of playing tennis was the easiest for me because initially when i was going for tournaments i had to first plan my visa plan my ticket but to get visa back then like today we have schengen visa you can travel to 20 plus countries back then when i was traveling at the uh, 17 18 19 there was no schengen you had to take visa for each european country Wow. Okay. So you know, so I had to literally go. My parents used to go to Bombay or Delhi, stand in the line early morning, get get that visa, and then okay, now say okay, I'm going to France. Okay, two tournaments are there, and after that, come back because I can't go to the German uh, tournament because but my counterparts who are from Europe or US who don't need visa are just doing that. I mean, they're just playing that calendar. So but here, so you're traveling, and then you come all the way back. go next to the german or france uh, i mean uh, some other european italian embassy get that visa and then plan a travel again my god the inconvenience of it absolutely so you know and again uh, you don't have a place to stay in case you happen to lose earlier now you're uh, you know constantly there just hanging around the tournament lot of expense staying in hotels if you had a house that much expense is also saved so i wish someone had guided me in that direction to say okay you know try and get a base there you know and then have a uh, academy there where i could just train on days in case i was not in the tournament needed a few place to train instead of constantly coming back and forth to india so that i i really feel i wish i had someone to speak to and understand this as i was you know growing up growing up I would tell my 19 year old self to just trust the process you know we're just overthinking so many things all the time i did that when i was younger but today i'm just like you're doing something just trust the process i think i would have given my younger self 
that yeah. um, advice, especially in our line of work, because it's so erratic. There's one day so much adulation, and one day there's so much setback. You know, it just goes like that. But just trust the process and just see what happens. Which I've uh, similarly I've told a lot of kids, but they've also asked. They, they have not been through the process, so they don't know how to trust that process. Mm-hmm. You know, so that uh, so uh, they're like, okay, I've done this for the month. I've woken up at six a.m. I've come for training. I've done my practice. But now after one month later, I'm still losing first round. So what do I trust? I said, but you know, that's not the process. That's yeah. the, just the start a small step of the process. Correct. But you know, but that frustrates them then. Right. Yeah. Because they want quick, immediate, yeah. you know, uh, things. And it takes so, so much like discipline as I hear absolutely. everything that you're saying. So for you, what is like a non-negotiable from code to life, right? The things that is a complete no-no for you. Um because i understand the amount of discipline it takes to excel and to be at it so what? the biggest thing uh, shubhra is to, you have to make sacrifices for everything and put priority on what your goal is if tennis was my goal i missed uh, family functions family uh, weddings you know whatever it may be that was completely secondary birthdays you know i see my friends going to birthdays to celebrate but those are sacrifices you made because tennis was the number one goal and that was my journey i wanted to do mm-hmm. and uh, you know so that is something i think uh, uh, you need to really have a strong will power to uh, be able to do that yeah and you need to have your closest people also understanding that for you yeah you know in terms of even when you are trying to eat the right kind of food in india we show love with food which is amazing right but when in terms of sport when you are following a certain uh, thing it's very difficult to go to someone's house or uh, and say sorry i'm not going to eat this but they it feels offensive because they have made with so much love yeah. you know so you Something know so, yeah, yeah. Right? so yeah. you know so those are the sacrifices you got to make to avoid uh, you know uh, what is your temptations yeah you talk you spoke about close people and how it's so important to have the right kind of close people who understand right that it is a tough journey and just to be by your side supriya so, your beautiful wife is a psychologist yes. um, it also helps that you have a wife who's a psychologist and looks like that i'm sure like anything she says okay baby you can <laughs> say that but what's like the best lesson you've learned from her I think the the best lesson for me she has uh supported my journey outside the tennis with through and through without even knowing anything about the sport to understand why I did it and why the sacrifices and really supported that and I think that takes a lot of effort because it's easy to come into a life and tomorrow uh, tomorrow saying yeah I'm going to this city I'm traveling every week but when you're traveling every day you sleep at 9 o'clock 10 o'clock you know to do that to understand that and and where she put my journey ahead of her also when traveling to understand this is what is needed these are sacrifices it happens the way you conduct yourself because it is impossible to learn from another players like say the a spouse because every player is so different in the way how they want their spouse to be part of that journey as well right yeah you know some players love having their wives at practices at training and everything for me i was like during the match i'm happy if if you're here it's not like i need to, because i said there are certain people in your life who are assigned for that role like my coach is for my tennis mm. part so you know so i'm saying you are here to to enjoy uh you know the the matches and also i'd love for you to support you know i see that support you know during matches it's you know at practice i'm totally fine it doesn't matter i don't uh, you know need supriya to be yeah. there but i think so that is something which is was not easy to you can't just teach it and that i think something which she has picked up and learned herself and understood and uh, you know given me that space in order to really uh you know keep believing in myself 
That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Firstly, to do a long distance relationship is tough, and absolutely to understand that hey, this is his space. Draw those boundaries, right? And she's done that. I think. Excellently. That's no, absolutely, really and yeah. you know, to and to sacrifice her own uh, career to travel to make the marriage work, work so yeah. that it you know we also get to see each other. Yeah. I unfortunately I don't have work from home option. Right. She, she on that hand does have that. Right. But like I said earlier, our schedule comes so late, it is impossible for her to plan an online session with somebody not knowing what time I'm going to play. Mm. Right. Yeah. So that was obviously also very difficult. Right. I mean, you know, and plus with the time zones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, know. you know. So that is again. Uh, so I think um, after a few years, the first three years, she traveled uh, with me a lot. I mean, you know, to really understand. Then she, now she, I, I tell her, you come to tournaments, which city you like, <laughs> because it more because like I said, the tennis store goes to the same cities every single. Yeah. A uh, week of the year, so uh, in a way uh, that has also really helped. And again, now after we had our daughter, uh, you know, so that she also doesn't miss out this journey. She does sacrifice on her work to come and travel, and so that uh, you know uh, our daughter Trida can watch me play at least or be around me because uh, you know I'm I'm never at home with uh, with my job. That's a beautiful name. What does it mean, Trida? It means the power of three goddesses. Actually. Wow. Yeah. Okay, Trida, nice, yeah. nice name. If there's a moment in your career where you want to relive it again, yeah, purely based on the emotions that you felt, which moment would that be? Hundred and twenty percent is uh, losing that uh, bronze medal match at Rio Olympics with Sanya. There's no no question, uh, you know, the first the semi-finals match, which maybe. Could have, uh, you know, gotten us to the finals and assured us of a medal, and then playing for the bronze medal. That uh, that's a moment. It, yeah, absolutely. It was extremely difficult. I mean, you know, because uh, uh, even thinking about it now, uh, you know, that that moment when you go through it, when you're so close, and in tennis, like I said, there's no second chance. Mm. Very rarely that you come back 24 hours later to play another match on the same court with that kind of magnitude in stake mm, yeah, yeah you know so uh, so i felt initially when we came back on court we were still thinking about the 24 hours match which we had lost in the semi finals of how i could have played this shot better that would have made a difference right. but simultaneously we had to be in that moment to to play for a bronze medal match, which was so, so humongous, which unfortunately we did not get. And, uh, you know, I think that I would have loved to relive and be there to now having this kind of maturity to have, you know, play that match. Okay. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. You're like an inspiration to many. Me being Thank one, you. by Thank the way. You, Who's your inspiration and why? Stefan Edberg was my inspiration because at that point of time, um, when I was watching tennis back in Coorg, uh, sitting with my dad, you know, we had these antennas, uh, you know, in Coorg where hardly there was signal. So he would send me up on the terrace and, you know, you're constantly trying to move those antennas and then uh, he'll be like, yeah, hold it there. Now the signal is coming or shouting for me, you know. I mean, you coming from Coorg understand exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, but uh, at that uh, point of time, Mostly in India, only Wimbledon was shown. And uh, Edberg, Becker, all of these guys were, uh, you know, at their prime. And the way he played, the way he conducted himself with interviews or on court, everything was something incredible. And, you know, I always looked up to that. Always, anytime uh, dad or mom would say, Edberg is playing, I would be there to watch. Uh, you know, it's not like I was sitting and watching tennis every single day. But Edberg's matches... You know, I loved. And never, ever I dreamt that he would one day watch my match. It only happened because uh, I was playing uh, with a friend from Pakistan, Aisa Mullah Qureshi. Uh, we were playing doubles in uh, the US, in California. And we were playing against Roger Federer and Stanislas Wawrinka in the, in the tournament. And at that point of time, Edberg was coaching Federer. 
so he had to sit in the match to watch the entire match and in my wildest dreams first of all meeting him was amazing and i did not even think that he will be watching you know my match so i think that was you know something incredible to have uh, you know not only you are playing against the, one of the best players in the world roger federer and then you have your uh, uh, you know idol sitting there and watching wow, watching that's them. a dream that's absolutely, nice absolutely absolutely Did you go tell mean, him? it's more than a dream because you don't you cannot dream, dream like that you know that you play Uh, you know one of the best in the world plus you have your idol uh, you know watching and you know i did tell him of course um, the i have met him a few times after that which has been amazing uh, so i did tell him that yes he was you know my idol and uh, I, you know and it was incredible uh, to you know meet him speak to him uh, you know so i'm really happy that uh, you know that uh, absolutely that's so nice what's a lesson from tennis that you take and apply it in your life i think to uh, to understand failure tennis teaches you that from a very young age to fail 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 and then still get up and still wanting to try try again so that is something which i have always taken you know in life yeah. oh that that's nice actually yeah. yeah and that'll help you so much in life right absolutely Because... i mean and, and tennis is a other beautiful game which teaches you to find solutions all the time mm. there is no guaranteed one line you follow and it's going to happen you're constantly trying to find a solution finding a way because you're playing against various different kind of opponents different styles which teaches you in life to first of all teaching you failure because majority of the matches we lose then we win so th that one and then also finding solution which is a day to day life as a normal human being you are you know there's so much going on you're trying to do but it doesn't help but but you're finding solutions to you know because there are times where uh, you know i've been in the airport uh, about to take a flight or suddenly delayed everybody is there panicking but i was like i'm already gone to the counter to ask them what is my next flight so they're like how is it happening i said because they even if i go there there's nothing they can do it's already now either delayed or uh, are you taking the next flight so the mind is already working on a solution when uh, you know supriya sometimes she comes and tells me something she's like i'm just speaking to you i don't want a solution because my mind automatically is you know <laughs> trying to find a solution even though indirectly i don't want to but it is it, it is, is like happening. that yeah okay oh nice and she being a psychologist i yeah, think understands I that That's... way better than anyone else wow this is great teamwork yeah, huh, both of uh, you all she's my in house shrink yeah, yeah so cool and such a gorgeous shrink <laughs> thank you Very Very all my all my effort there yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> what's like the most meaningful interaction you've had with a fan like if you remember there's been a lot of uh, fantastic uh, uh, you know interactions but uh, recently on how they've enjoyed uh, watching me evolve as a player and they they say it is so pleasing to watch you play uh, in the, you know they like you play tennis effortlessly mm -hmm. and that kind of interaction and not he's he didn't come to really say i want a picture i want an autograph he just came to generally have a, you know a chat and uh, this happened recently in italy and i think it was uh, you know something uh, very very unique very different and uh, you know pleasant when you get you know people who come and you know really have a chat on that nice what's a piece of advice that you got early on in your career you know that stuck with you maybe from a mentor your father anyone that you that stuck with you and you've taken it with you till today to do the right thing and to trust yourself that is has no matter what decision i take to trust it mm. and not to doubt it the minute you start doubting it you know that means you're not trusting yourself right Would so you... that is uh, i think and to and to really you know be free yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nice. i think that is i think uh, taught i think my mom you know told me this you know as young to just uh, you know no matter what you do do it with commitment do it with uh, everything because that's when you'll really give yourself a chance that's true actually hone your craft and Absolutely. then do that well right yeah very true yeah i a... remember reading open by agassi and yeah. it's one of my favorite books would you ever write a book about yourself a memoir or something i i, I definitely do want to do uh, write one or uh, you know get someone to you know uh, uh, write it uh, you know for me because i think there there is so much 
in terms of that first 20 years of my journey. This, you know, second 20 years, majority of the people know because it's, uh, you know, your tenant. But that initial 20 years, I think, is uh, something which, uh, uh, you know, I'd love to, uh, you know, uh, really write about and speak about, uh, you know, because uh, coming from Kurg with the challenges you constantly face, but still being able to get to the highest level in this sport. So it's not necessarily every, we all talk about, we don't have infrastructure here mm. in sport. That's why we don't get there. But I disagree. And I say, if we commit to something it is truly truly possible we commit to education as indians we so we are extremely good at that so uh, in terms of sport is a new thing we are still starting to commit right now mm. yeah. you know and i say having all the infrastructure in the us or canada or uk mm. there hasn't been an indian origin who's come back to play a professional sport so true yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe one yeah, or two yeah, here and yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. But the amount of Indian origins who are there, right. because they are still going into academics there as well. Yeah, yeah. Right. So our first priority is, uh, you know, education, yeah. which I'm not saying is a wrong thing, but I'm just saying is the commitment we do for education is sim similarly a commitment we need to do for to sport in order to give ourselves a chance. Yeah. A chance that otherwise we are not committing to ourselves as yet. We are yet to become a sporting country. We are still far, far from uh, becoming a sporting country. That's true. Yeah. Have you thought of a name for that book? I don't know. what. I ha Actually, to, honestly, I haven't at all. You haven't, yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe at some point when you do, you must tell me. Maybe yes. the underdog or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, no, absolutely, yeah. I, you know, I keep, when I travel, I keep thinking about sometimes these stories come up and i better narrate it to myself because sometimes you forget yeah you know the you know those kind of journey and right. you know there's uh, i'd love to have uh, somebody go and speak to all those uh, um, members in cook who are part of that kind of uh, journey you know who's to, when i where i started tennis and how that club even started in madapur yeah you know exactly. this, uh, yeah yeah, yeah. I'll be the first one reading that book, by the way, because <laughs> I love your story. I love your journey. You're like a wealth of experiences and um, just so much knowledge. You know, what I've always liked about you, Rohan, is this consistency in humility that you've kept irrespective of where you are in life, personally and professionally. And that's so much that we can learn from you. And uh, thank you so much. This has been honestly such a lovely conversation. You're all heart. You poured it out so beautifully. And uh, I'm just so excited for everything that's ahead of you. I know people might say uh, at 43, he's doing this. I really think it's a start of very big things for you. Honestly. Thank you, thank you Shubhra. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure uh, chatting with you and, uh, you know, once again, all the very best on this new journey you have started and, uh, you know, you definitely have the perfect name for it, uh, the flip the script and, uh, you know, and I think uh, uh, I can definitely vouch, uh -huh. <laughs> you, know, you know, that in my <laughs> journey and uh, uh, the one thing I would like to add is that, um, you know, everybody start at one level. And uh, that upbringing is thanks to my parents who have kept me where I am today. And I feel, you know, if you understand where you have come from, nothing changes. That is so true. I say yeah. that about myself too. Yeah. Every If somebody gives me a compliment about my personality, I say, it's mom and dad. Like I go back to my roots saying that that's where I came from. It's been a beautiful journey. They allowed us to do what we want to do, right? Like not too many people enjoy that. You said tennis, they you wanted to do tennis they stayed for me at 18 when I said model my parents could have said what are you doing but they yeah. let me so I think that's something that we have in common right that we remember Absolutely. where we come from and we don't forget that yeah so. no no but thanks again for having me it was a really pleasure chatting with you and uh, you know, hopefully we can do this again uh, somewhere down the line, uh, yes, you know, whenever sure. you are. Uh, when you're flipping like, the uh, script that uh, time too, right? episodes down yes. maybe. <laughs> How sweet. Thank yeah. you. You are all things cool. No, seriously. Thank you, you Shubha. Thanks so much. Yes. Okay. Thank Thanks. You. Bye. <laughs>